فاشرف بي لاشتغال بالعلم ولا تبغي به ما عشت يا ذا بدلا ويا له من شرف عظيم قصد لأن الناس يتنى بس When we say qasd, we don't mean qasd al-hukmi, we mean qasd al-fi'li. The person has to intend the action, not the intention of the, the ruling. The person has to intend to stand on the mushaf. He doesn't have to intend the kufr. We don't, if you, if, even if you didn't know it was kufr, it doesn't matter. It doesn't change anything. The third one is a mani, which is ta'wil interpretation. And the ta'wil here has to be sa'ir. It has to be acceptable acceptable interpretation and the fourth one is ikrah dress burdening somebody's been forced to do something those four if they're present there's no takfir you can place on a person because these are mawani' they are preventing factors that prevent this takfir this hukum of kufr being placed on this person and the opposites are the shurut are you with me the opposites of them are the conditions that have to be there نعم. And everything is like that. صلاة الشروط. The shurut have to be there, and the mawani have to be absent. خطأ فيهم. ها خطأ أزواء نعم. قصد زندة أزواء. قصدا يعني خطأ نعم. نعم. نعم صح صح. خطأ قصد is the opposite for it. So the first one is what? جهل ignorance. The second one is what? القصد intent أم عدم الخطأ خطأ would be better because we're talking about the موانع now so it's better to say خطأ قصد is actually the شرط so خطأ so the first is جهل second is خطأ third is تأويل and the fourth one is what إكراه إكراه So that's what the author says, الحكم, the, the ruling is not complete. Until it gathers in him, الشروط, all of the conditions have to be there. ترتفيع, ترتفيع, الوجود, that the mawani is not there. نعم. The author here now talks about istihqaq al-jaza' muqabil al-amal which is you deserve reward in accordance to the action in response to the action so if a person does his action istihqaq al-jaza' he deserves to be rewarded for his action so that's between Allah and the slave and also the slaves between themselves as well so if a person does an action فَمَنْ عَمِلَ عَمَلًا لِلَّهِ A person does an action for Allah أَدَّاهُ عَلَى الْوَجْهِ الشَّرْعِي He done it in the shar'i way meaning he followed ikhlas and he done it in accordance to the sunnah فَقَدْ إِسْتَحَقَّ الْجَزَاءِ This person now rewards the reward inshaAllah ta'ala And if a person does an action for somebody and they say do this for me and I'll pay you He finished, he did the actions that were needed from him He now deserves to be rewarded for his action And the, 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 the rights he has is before the sweat dries on his forehead as the messenger told us alayhi salatu salam so you can't then after he's done the work for you you waste his time and you pull and push that you give it to him straight away as soon as he does the work naam the author now is talking about what the ulama call fi'lu ba'd al-ma'mur in shaqqa fi'lu kullihi this is basically only on the ahkam that have what is known as taba'ud. Okay? As for the ahkam, some things you can't do as you were told to do it. For example, the salah, you have to stand. It's something you have to do. But this person doesn't have the ability to stand up. He comes with what? فَإِنَّهُ يَأْتِي بِمَا يَقْدِرُ عَلَيْهِ He comes with what he's able to. فَيُصَلِّ قَاعِدًا So he sits down and he prays. But that's the ibadat which are what? الَّتِي تَقْبَلُ التَّبَعُضُ But that's the actions that accept that. 
There are actions, some actions, some ibadat, التي لا تقبل التبعض. It doesn't accept it. You either have to come with it or leave it. And that's, for example, fasting. You can either fast or you can't. You can't say, I'm only going to fast half of the day. You either fast or you don't fast. So the author here is talking about the actions that do accept taba'ud. Salah, if you can't do it in its full way, then you come with what you're able to. You can't leave it. Salah, you can't leave it. As for fasting, are you able to fast? You said, no, I can't fast, I'm sick. But guess what I can do? After my medication, which I have to take for dhuhr, I can fast. We'll say to you, La, leave it then. Now. Now the author goes into الضمان في المأذون به. Do you have to compensate? What's it called? Com compensate. Do you have to compensate for something you were given permission to do? Somebody gives me his car keys. He goes to me, أخي, go to my house, get me. Are you with me, brothers? And I go to his, he says, go get me this. And I take his car, I go. Are you with me? And something happens to his car on the way. Are you there? Is it upon me to pay him back, compensate for this? If it was what he permitted for me to do, then no, I don't have to compensate for him. So the permission is two types. Al-Idnul Urfiyu. There's something called Idnul Urfi, which is the customs permission. And that is Idnul Abdi fi haqqihi li ghayri. Idnul Urfi is when a person permits for someone other than him. Something that's his own haqq, he permits it for somebody else. But there are two conditions that have to be there. ثُبُوتُ الْمُلْكِ فِي حَقِّ الْآذِلِ The one that's given the permission, he has to own the keys that he's given me. And the second condition has to be أَهْلِيَّةُ الْمَأْذُونِ فِي التَّصَرُّفِ I also have to be the person who can drive. <laughs> If I can't drive, I have to sort this out. I have to compensate. That's Idnul Urfi. Are you with me, brothers? Which is our giving permission to each other. There's something called Idnul Shar'i, which is the Shar'a gives permission to the slave. And this is two conditions that are needed for this one. أن يكون في الإذن مصلحة مباشرة للعبد that the permission has a direct maslaha for the slave and the second one is there is no harm present for the individual who is ma'adunu lahu And the example for this is when a person is hungry, he's on a death, he's dying because of hunger. The Sharia are permitted for you to go and eat. But there is a there is a what? There is a daman here. You have to pay back. You enjoy the eating, but you have to pay back. نعم. <coughs> the author now goes into something which is known as الحكم يدور مع التي وجودا وعدما in which the scholars call it and that is علا means الوصف الظاهر المنضبط الذي علق به الحكم الشرعي The illa means the reason. 
behind something. For example, why was alcohol made haram? What's the illa for it? What's the reasoning behind it? Al iskar. Is this illa muntabita? Yes. Because it's illa mansusa. The illa are two types the way they are found out. The first way is illa mansusa, which is that the textual evidence is actually mentioned it. And the second one is illa which is mustambata. The illa here is brought out by the scholars and the jurists. They're the ones who extract it. The illa which is mansusa is muntabit. The mustambita, the one that's extracted can be muntabit. It can sometimes be not muntabit. Are you with me, brothers? For example, when you're a traveler, are you allowed to, uh, why do you break your fast for? Question, brothers. So I'm traveling right now on the month of Ramadan. I break my fasting for what's the reason, what's the illa of this hukum being ru uplift for me? Huh? Taysir to make something easy. Okay, what about a man who works nine to nine in Ramadan and he works in a furnace? He makes bread in the heat. Can he stop work? Can he stop? Your illa is here is not mundabita then. Do you see my point? Are you there, brothers? This is illa ghayra mundabita. Because everybody can use the word ta'asir and ta'asir and say, I'm not going to fast because of ta'asir and ta'asir. Are you there? So this is not, traveling was not made. Are you there? Was not made, the ruling was not lifted because of ta'asir to make it easy. It's not. Because that same person who's in the furnace may have it even harder than the traveling one. Burning inside the heat to make bread. Sah? So the hukum, which is mansus, is the one that the textual evidence mentioned, like alcohol. Wherever intoxication I find in anything, it becomes haram. This illa brings about a ruling. That's why he, the qaida is al hukmu, the ruling revolves around. It always revolves around the illa, the reasoning. Wherever the illa is, the ruling comes. So wherever I find this illa of intoxication somewhere, the ruling will come and it will work around it. Does that make sense? وَكُلُّ حُكْمٍ دَائِرٍ مَعِ اللَّتِي وَهِيَ اللَّتِي قَدْ أَوْجَبَتْ لِلشِّرَعَةِ But there are two conditions that have to be there. أَنْ تَكُونَ الْعِلَّةٌ مُتَيَقَّنَةٌ That this illa is, no, is, is known by certainty. The second one is wurud al-dalil that evidences come bi baqa'il hukmi that the rain, ruling stays ma antifa' illati even though the ruling even even the moving of the illa Naam the author here, he talks about a qa'idah which the scholars call a shurutu fil uqud Conditions in transactions. He's talking about that. Wa kullu shartin, every shartin lazimun, it is lazim lil aqidi, in bay' nikah and maqasid. Like for example, if a woman conditions a man, you can't get married. It's permissible. She says, brother, you're not going to marry a second or third wife. Condition. If he agrees to it, he has to follow this condition. It's permissible for her to do so. وَكُلُّ شَرْطٍ Every condition. لَازِمُ لِلْعَاقِدِ Another one is, another condition that we make in our business. We make this condition في الْبَيْعِ in our buying. وَالنِّكَاحِ in marriage. That the woman conditions, I won't leave this country. Or I won't leave, if she says that. That condition has to be followed if you go take that condition on board. Unless the condition is haram. Like he tells his wife, condition that you're not going to wear hijab, I'll marry you. 
She can't accept that from him. So the shurut are followed as long as it's not something that goes against what? The shurut, brothers, that are connected to the uqud are two types. Shurut, which are connected to uqud, which is transactions, are two types. Shurut asliyah, there are shurut already by default. Like for example, the wife says to her husband, one of the conditions is that you're going to fund me and you're going to take care of me. Well, that's already there, with or without me making this condition with you. This is part of the marriage itself. Are you with me? The second one is shurut fil uqud. Shurut which are in the uqud. But is za'ida. It's extra. The person is asking for this talaba li maslaha because they believe there's a maslaha going to come to them from it. Or daf'an li mafsada or it's going to repel a harm for them. Like for example, the woman says, the issue of polygamy, she says, it's going to cause me a headache. It's going to cause me problems. No, I don't want it. Want it. This is not part of the aqdu nikah. It's not part of it. <coughs> so every party has to then adhere to this, this contract that they made. Now, And the, the base that we, sp we say, pay attention, is that polygamy is not even a sunnah. That's what we hold. Are you with me? Polygamy is not sunnah, it's mubah. That's the strongest opinion. Now, But if it's a sunnah, she can't make it haram. The asal of sunnah is what? The asal of polygamy, more than one wife, it's not a sunnah, it's a ibaha, something mubah. There's no evidence to show that it's a sunnah. Now. So can she put in the for example, that she's not going to do She believes that it's not going to do she doesn't believe it's wajib. But again, as I said, it's a sunnah. Um, since it's a sunnah, that you, no one can change the ahkam of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I thought you were going to read, eh? Can I not become a sunnah due to what it leads to? I have many children. Like what? Can it not be a wasila to a sunnah? Which one? To have many children. That's like, you mean the uh, polygamy? Yeah. Yeah, that's your intention. You get, you're asking me whether you're going to get rewarded for intention. Now you're going to get into, you're, you're going to get rewarded for intention. It's not going to make it sunnah. The asal. The asal is... If I eat food right now to become a person of ibadah and I ate breakfast this morning so I can teach for so many hours, I get rewarded for my intention, but that doesn't make food sunnah. It just makes my eating of the food, it gives me reward regarding it. So yeah, a man can marry more than one wife and get rewarded for it because of his intention. But does it make polygamy sunnah? No. It's not sunnah. It's mubah. First marriage is huh? First marriage is Marriage is for sunnah, naam. Ah, marriage is sunnah. Polygamy is not sunnah. Multiple wives is not sunnah. Why are you upset brothers for? Majority of you here are not even married, aslan. Get the first one first, ya ikhwah. They talk about second or third or fourth, yeah? No, it's not sunnah. It's say mubah. Naam. The author now talks about a matter called Qur'ah. Qur'ah basically means to throw a lot. And it's basically used in two times. The author mentions them. The first one is Maqam al-Ibham, when it's ambiguity in a situation. And you can't distinguish between what? You with me? The second one is maqamul is, is diham, which is two things are overcrowding one another. You also use it, and the Prophet used to use it for his wives. Which of those is going to take? That's the times it's done. 
Are you with me? Like which of those it came out, you throw a lot. You can do it in whichever way you feel happy. Put it in a little basket and do that. Um, what do you call it? You can throw a lot for the two, the two or the three. That's how you do it. Do you, do, you ha do you have to do it every single time? No. Just do it the first time. And the next time, let it just be a cycle that goes on. So once it starts off, you're, you went last time, this is this time. You went this time, this time, you went this time. You went this time, you went this time. Your wives. So for example, you've got two wives and you're, you're traveling. So which one are you going to take? You throw a lot. Qur'a. The Prophet used to do that, alayhi salatu salam. Which of those who is going to go with him, he used to throw a lot. And whoever, whichever of those he came out for, he will take with her. He will take with him. Are you? The author now goes into a qa'idah called Ijtima'u Amalayni in Jinsin Wahidin. Which is something called Tadakhul Al-A'mal, when actions enter into each other. As very well spoken about. And if the actions enter, I mean, this qaida, it's seen as two, two points are seen regarding it. The first one is, is the ham. They're not entering each other, but they are overcrowding one another. Okay? In this situation, we've already spoken about tazahum al masalih al mafasid. We've already dealt with that. What about tadakhul? When they enter into each other. They enter into each other. In this situation, what you do is, which is known as tadakhul, you, you do one of them. Fu'ila ahaduma, you do one of them, but you intend both of them. For example, when you come into the masjid, you want to pray tahiyatul masjid, and the salah is actually being prayed, and they both now entered onto each other. What do you do? You pray the dhuhr that's in, but you intend both of them. We're going to come to it now. وَمِن شُرُوطِ وَمِن شُرُوطِ بِثَلَاثِ شُرُوطٍ There's three conditions that are needed. أَنْ يَكُونَ الْعَمَلَانِ مِنْ جِنْسٍ وَاحِدٍ That both of the actions are from one thing. The second is أَنْ يَكُونَ مُتَّفِقِيَ الْأَفْعَالِ They all have to be both, they have to agree with the actions. In other words, one can't be fasting and one can't be salah. Now the first condition is that they have to be, for example, um, let me give you an example both. For example, Salatul Janazah and Salatul Nafli. Salatul Janazah is a Salah, yes or no? But they have Ruku' and Sujood. So can you intend for me to hate the Masjid? Are you with me? So this is jins wahid, which is salah. Are you with me? But it's not in the same. It is not in agreement in terms of actions. Does that answer your question? You still have your question? Yeah, yeah. Like for example, you want to pray a salah and you want to teach the people. You can do both intentions at the same time. I can pray salah, sunnah, but I'm teaching the people how to pray. Two intentions at the same time. I say, people, I'm going to pray, watch me pray. And I stand there and I pray. And I'm intended sunnah actually to pray. And I'm also intended to teach the people as well. Hey, fadal. The author now goes into something called Al-Mashghulu la yushaghalu 
something that's already preoccupied, you can't busy it again, you can't preoccupy on something else. For example, somebody take took your somebody took from you your watch because you were hungry and you said to him, brother, I'm very hungry, I haven't got money and I need rice, I need chicken, I need flour, powder, whatever, you ask for so many things. He said, no problem, give me something valuable of yours. So you take your watch off, he keeps it there. So I'll hold it for you until you what? Until you bring the money. This is called marhun, rahan. So you go and now what do you do? You need to bring back the money, right? This watch, you can't start thinking of doing things with it. It's already busy. It's already holding something else down. Are you with me? You can't sell that watch and try to do something else with it. It's not yours right now, in this particular moment. Everything that's busy with something, you can't, you can't preoccupy with something else. Do you see? No. The author now goes into the qa'idah which is If a brother pays your debt for you and he says I'm going to pay your debt for you If he intended it If he intended it then he can request for it and say look I paid you five pounds for you Where's my well give it to me are you there? But if he didn't intend, and there was no intention involved, then it's not permissible for him to ask. It becomes a sadaqah. You paid, you can't ask me now. Does that make sense? That's what the author is talking about now. Anyone who fulfills for his brother a wajib, he has the right to ask for it. That's when he... What he's talking about here is that it is not a hiba. Because we remember, the person who you give something as a gift, you're not allowed to take it back what you gave as a gift. But this is not a gift. If I intended that I was going to what? If I intended to get my money back, I'm going to get my money back from you. Naam. That's if I give sadaqah for you. لا تبطل صدقاتكم بالمن والأذى. Men here means what? Reminding the person the favor you did for them. Remember the time I was there for you, brother. I gave you this sadaqah, and you keep it. It's sadaqah. But if you gave a person a debt, you can remind remind him every single day. Give my money. Give my money. You can. You can bug him if you want. That's your rights. That's your rights. You can ask him. Now. The author here talks about al itida' bil wazi' al tabi'i wa anna bi manzilat al wazi' al shar'i. Like for example, I know this sounds very filthy for me to say, but are you allowed to eat feces? Huh? Huh? Why? Do you have a delete for it? This is where the tabi. Yeah. The Sheikh is saying anything that's like that, kalwazi is shari. It's like the Sharia. It's like the Sharia disregarded it like that. Bila no Qurani. So the wazir is two types. Wazir which is tabiyu and wazir which is shari. The wazir which is tabi, which is who al magrusu fil jibilati tabiya. It's something Allah has in placed inside us and is put inside us, which is we all hate the idea of that question I just asked right now, which is not even nice to ask. <coughs> the second, which is al-wazir al-shari, which is the muharramat, things that are haram. That's so. Both of them are. Naam. Um, نعم. الحمد لله على التمام في البدء والختام والدوام ثم الصلاة مع سلام شاهيه على النبي وصحبه والتابعين. We finished the explanation of the book. 
uh, written by Sheikh Abdul Rahman Nasser Saidi, rahimahullah ta'ala. And uh, we will be doing Fadlul Islam after 10 minutes break, inshallah ta'ala. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ashadu an la ilaha illallah, astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayhi.